is it safe to be a plant-based athlete, triathlete, or mixed martial artist? Do you get enough protein? Yeah, it's safe. It's help. It's more helpful. It, it actually makes performance better, easier if you're a plant-based athlete. And there are a lot of reasons for it. Um, the first one is that inflammation is deadly to athletes, and there's going to be some of it from the hard working out. But inflammation can be caused by diet alone. Animal foods, for example, are high in arachidonic acid, which is a precursor to inflammatory hormone production. So to the extent that inflammation can cause more injuries, keeping it lower can be helped by being on a plant-based diet. Um, the protein issue, it, it really, higher protein intake doesn't make you a better athlete. And gosh, if you could eat protein, if muscle was built in the kitchen, We'd live in a land of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Look at the way people eat in this country, right? Muscle and athleticism is not built in the kitchen, it's built in the gym. We have very good studies showing that if you take a group of people and they all do the same exercise training program, give this group of people 34% of calories from protein, give this group of people 17% of calories from protein, there's no difference in where they end up. We have very good studies showing that it's not the protein, it's the training program. For example, if you take a group of people, and there's one, at least one research study using these specific numbers, and you put them all on the same exercise program, and you give this part of the group 17% of calories from protein, this part of the group 34% of calories from protein, at the end of a certain number of months, there's no difference in the two because it wasn't about the protein, it was about the athletic training program, okay? Um, Another thing to keep in mind is that glucose is the energy currency of the body, and it's a byproduct of carbohydrate. The body, just like your car has to have gasoline, like you can't put, there's only so much Pepsi you can put in the tank. It really has to have gasoline to operate, right? There's no substitute. It's the same thing for the body. Now, if you don't provide enough glucose through high carbohydrate eating, the body's gonna get it from somewhere. And one of the easiest ways to get it unless you're doing like a, an ultra marathon where you're, you're gonna burn up fat stores. But the easiest way to get it outside of those situations is to take lean muscle mass and extract, you know, burn it up so you can get some amino acids like alanine that, regular, that uh, very easily convert to uh, glucose. So actually a high carbohydrate diet is muscle sparing, right? Which surprises many, many people. Um, there, there is no protein deficiency in westernized countries. It's difficult to not eat enough protein. It's difficult. If you're eating a calorically adequate diet, you get enough protein. One more thing I'll mention, because this is a way of explaining it that helps people understand a little bit. So um, I mentioned glucose is to the body like gasoline in the car. All right, so you put gas in the car, you drive so many miles, however you can on a tank of gas, you must get more gas. And so you eat sweet potatoes and rice and beans and all this stuff. And, and, and when the glucose is gone, you have to get more food, right? Very similar. Now, protein is different. Protein is actually like a fountain in downtown Columbus, Ohio. Let's say our hypothetical fountain has 500 gallons of water in it. And it circulates all day long, you know, really pretty downtown fountains. Okay, every morning, the city workers don't go in and put um, 500 more gallons in, do they? They put 20 gallons in. That's what splashed out or evaporated. That's how protein works in your body because it's all broken down into amino acids, which are used again and again and again. It's the amino acid pool. So how you find out how much protein you need to replace, because the amino acids can only be used so many times, you do urinary excretion studies. Because when a, an amino acid is broken apart for excretion, it releases nitrogen. And nitrogen throws off toxic byproducts like ammonia and urea, which is why you don't want to eat too much of this stuff, right? but the nitrogen is excreted. And you can get a pretty good idea of what the average human is actually needing to replace in terms of protein. This will blow your mind, but it's like two and a half, three percent of calories, very low. So if you lived on Twinkies, you'd get enough. Not that I'd recommend it, but you still wouldn't be deficient in protein.